Okay, I'm Carrie and this is Forrest. When, when I do a front assembly on a dog, usually the dog tells me how he's supposed to be groomed. And the way he does that is through his bone structure. Because what I do is I let my fingers do the talking. Because if you can know the structure of your dog, then you can groom any dog. And what I mean, for example, is when we were figuring out the clipper line, you'd say, well, you know, where am I supposed to start and how far am I supposed to go? And what I do is I start behind the ear and I come down and my fingers will tell me, will go down straight in front of his shoulder blades down to his chest. And that's the area that I know it has to be clippered. That's the area then behind my hand is the area that has to be stripped. What we do is when you're looking at a dog's structure, and I need to raise this arm a little bit on him, it's being so good, <clears throat> is this is the shoulder blade. You can put your hand on the dog's shoulder blade, the palm of your hand, and you can feel it. When they say a dog has good layback, what that means is the shoulder is supposed to be at a 90 degree angle. So this is the shoulder, this is the point of shoulder here, and it's supposed to be 90 degrees like this. And it comes down to a point at the base of the neck and at the shoulders, which is called the withers. And what you're doing is you're grooming a dog's shoulders down through its legs so that you create the illusion that you're supposed to create and with the structure. Now, when they say a dog is straight in shoulders, that means the dog is less than 90 degrees. It's, uh, excuse me, 45 degrees. It's more like a 90 or anywhere in between. And what we're going to do then is the dog tells you its structure. Because you come down and you say, where am I supposed to strip? Well, I come down behind the ear and in front of the shoulder blade. So I know that this is the stripped part. But your hand then comes across the bottom of the shoulder and on top of the elbow. And you, a dog's got an elbow. You can come straight down and you can feel it. And your hand comes right here underneath the elbow. And this comes up. This right here. You know, my hand came down. This whole area is what's stripped. Because when they say a dog is loaded in the shoulders, sometimes it looks loaded because you've got too much hair here. What I say is a Scotty is not an angel, so it shouldn't have wings. And when you've got hair here, I call that a wing because it flips in the air. But they're not angelic. The little, little ornery ones. But what happens here is this is where your furnishing line is, at the top of the elbow. And when you strip this off, see right now when you comb this dog out, it looks like his furnishing line starts up here. But we're going to start, and we're going to take that comb, and we're going to take all that hair off. And I know you say, oh my gosh, I've grown those furnishings and I need those furnishings. But it, it is, furnishings are an illusion. It looks like there's a lot of skirts, but what it is, it's really a bunch of layers all tightly packed. And if the hair moves when the dog walks, then it needs to come off or it's not in the right spot. You've got it too long in the right spot. Then you say, <clears throat> okay, Carrie, you've told me I need to take the shoulder. So we're going to work on this shoulder. But how far do I come up? Because someone told me somewhere along the line that this hair right here at this withers part is supposed to be long. So what do you do? <clears throat> you come down between the two ears, and I call it a mohawk. You come down between the ears, and the dog's, again, the dog structure is going to tell you. You come down between the ears, and hopefully they're standing, and you're going to feel where the shoulder blade guide you to, to, to the point of where it closes. It's like a diamond. And that's the withers. That's the point of the withers. So this is the hair that's going to be longer. So you've got this hair here. That's your longer hair. So that means all of this comes off. And we learned all of this comes off. So now, right now, this is our whole area that we got to take short. This is the whole area that got to take short. Now, when you stack a dog's front, that, now I want to show you this side. This side we did in the other class.
if you look, we've taken this shorter. You see, we've lowered his furnishing line. He doesn't look as tall. And see, he doesn't have much wing right now, as much as he did on the other side. And what we did is we trimmed along the bottom of the feet. So before I get too far ahead, let's strip on this a little bit. And this is where you use your stripping stone or your knife. Now, you're going to use a stone or a knife depending on the dog's coat texture. Some dogs, the knife cuts the coat. Some dogs, it doesn't. But this is mostly stonework. A dog is very, very sensitive on their shoulders. They'll probably cry uncle, and they'll probably sound like they're dying. But they'll get over it, and they're not dying. They're just putting on an act. But it is a sensitive area. It is a very sensitive area. And what you'll do is you'll strip a bunch. You'll strip a bunch, and then you'll comb it. Because you've got to see what you're going. You've got to constantly recomb the dog. Let him shake, see where you're coming along. See, already we started shorten this up. Come back across. See my wings? I got that wing. I want to get this off. You say, oh my gosh, Carrie, that's just furnishing. Well, it's unnecessary furnishing. We're going to rip that off. Come. The other thing is that you probably want to put the dog's butt to your chest. Because <clears throat> the direction that you strip the dog and you, the hair comes out is the direction that it will grow back in. So if you rip the hair follicle this way, the hair will grow in this way. And it continues along with that long, sleek look that they want to have. It's an illusion. Which direction does the hair go? If you stand to the side and strip down, then the hair is going to go down. And they're going to still look kind of wide in the shoulder. So you continually want to pull backwards. Put that chest, put your behind in your chest. So we're going to pull all that out. Now I can work up here a little bit. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times you'll pull and pull and pull, and you'll say, you know, now he's really long, so we're making some major progress. But sometimes if you've already got a dog in short coat, you're like, not making much progress. What do I need to do? Well, this is where you pull out the stripping knife or the raking knife, depending on, and you're going to try to rake some of it out. Because sometimes it's, it looks big just because there's a lot of fuzz. Now, when you're raking a dog, see it's soft undercoat, you have to make sure that you hold the knife flat flat against the dog. Let me show you why. Because if you hold it perpendicular to the skin and you scrape it across, you have just ragged up the dog's skin. But if you hold it flat, it doesn't catch on skin. It only takes out fuzz. It catches the hair. So you have to make sure that you hold the knife flat. And guaranteed, you will feel, and the dog will tell you when they catch skin. So if you hold it flat, maybe put like a little finger here so you got some pressure. Because sometimes to get that fuzz out, you got to put a little elbow grease behind it. But see, hold it flat, and it gets the fuzz out. You can use the fine or the coarse. A lot of times the fine stripping knife is really good for shoulder work. Like this. Okay? See, and you just continually go over it. And so you've defuzzed it, and now we'll strip it a little more, because now we find and see where it's long. Let me lower this for you, buddy. You say, I want to lay down. Okay. He's doing so good. Now, <clears throat> see how we shortened up his furnishing line a little bit? We're still not there yet. A lot of it looks really long because its furnishings are so long. This boy's just been hanging out all winter growing hair. And while this is really good, technically, furnishings are multi-length. Because when it's all one length, it, it flips and flops. And if you think about when our bangs are short or when our hair is short, it will hold in place. But as soon as our hair gets too long, it starts flipping and falling out of place. So it's the same concept on the dog. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this dog's front leg. What we're going to do 
is we're going to pull, let me get on the other side here so you guys can see this. We're going to pull it all forward. We're going to lift it up. We're going to pull it all forward, okay? And we're just going to cut it all off. Because a Scotty's front feet are round circles. If you look at those pictures, remember how we said that it's really cool to see those little round feet going away from you? Well, it's the same thought in the front. Just make that nice round circle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clean out the toes. Yeah, that goes clean too because this is what makes your house dirty. This is where the dirt is tracked in. Continue to make a round circle. Going around and around. A lot of times you need to trim the hair on the feet before you can even get to the toenails. His toenails are really short. He's been walking along the concrete a bunch, so he's worn down his own toenails. Sometimes in the winter time when they don't get to go out much, their toenails will get really long. But I, yeah, I don't even need to trim his, so I'm not even going to attempt it. Did Helen show you how to do toenails in the last session? Okay, good. Toenails are the same with everybody, so no sense relearning that. So we're going to continue to clean these feet out. Okay. Probably should take that a little bit tighter, but I'm going to leave it for the now. Come back over here. Let's brush it. Look at that. He doesn't look near as tall now, does he? And you can see, now as you start as you start taking away hair, it's going to tell you, because if you remember the bone structure, come down between the shoulders, come around with no wings, it's going to tell you where you need to take that hair off. See, you can still tell sticking out. That's got to go real tight. A lot of times if you look through your grooming book, there's a, uh, an article that talks about the numbering, all these different areas that are numbered. And which area should you strip first? And the shoulders are always the last area you strip because that's the area you want it to be the shortest. But you can strip a dog all out completely and just continue to always pick this while the other grows long. But So it doesn't really matter what order. But again, this area is always really short because, again, it's that illusion of that nice, long, cylindrical tube. You know, you want the nice, sleek look. Now, what I would do for this dog, because his furnishings are so long, and I said I wanted a multi-length, is technically I should strip them. But if I strip these furnishings because they're all one length, I'm going to lose them all. So I need to do some instant damage control and put some layers in there immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and comb it up and I'm going to cut it. And you say, oh, God, she's just tacking at it. Yep, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> OK. Then you're going to cut it a little bit, comb it out, because you only want to do two or three snips before you do anything. And if your dog has layers already, if it's not all one length, don't be cutting it, OK? It's only if your hair is all one length. I'm just trying to get this dog looking presentable. Now this is where I'm going to need to start stripping it. These long hairs, you just pull them from the bottom. Just pull them from the bottom. But to get a good front assembly, again, what I want to emphasize is these shoulders. And this needs to stay tight. Because when a dog moves, its front arms, the way it stacks itself is its arms go directly underneath the shoulders and it's a nice, tight, with toes pointed forward look. And what you're able to do then is you're able to have these nice front posted legs and you're able to take your hand and you're able to come under and go straight down. A dog that's too narrow, when you hear the term narrow, means that you cannot put your hand and go down. It gets stopped by bone. For example, the arms may look fine up here, but they're in and you're not going to get those hands down. Because when a dog has movement, it's called reach and drive. You reach with the front, you drive with the rear. So when a dog moves and it's got the nice tight shoulders, you're going to have a long 
nice reaching gait. Nice long reach. And see, you don't want any hair flipping around. And you want these as nice and tight as possible because you want that sleek athletic look. You want to be able to see the muscle. You don't want any hair flying at all. And the dog structure will tell you. And what you'll do then after you have stripped it down and you have uh, stripped and stripped to your heart's content, you've raked and raked and you just don't think you can get any farther and you still have a ridge going on. You're going to strip right from the back of the head too, behind the ear, because this is where it gets wadded up in the lead. So you want that nice clean channel. Strip it all out. It's going to be, you're going to get it real thin, almost bald, because again, that's the area that should be the tightest coated. You remember how they said you want this really tight? The length up here is about the same length as on the shoulders. It's that tight. It's that tight. See? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. Look at that. I got that short. That sure needs to get short here. So we're going to strip on this some more. And I'm putting a shoulder on this dog. You didn't see his shoulders when we started, did you? just looked like this furnishing, and it looked very straight, too. This dog's got a good shoulders. Look at that. They come back. We're showing that to the judge. We want to show him his bone structure. We want to show him that he's nowhere near as big as he looks. He only looks big because it's an illusion, because his hair's long and dragging on the floor.